Francis Crick helped discover the structure of DNA, and there's some debate about whether LSD helped him make this discovery. Do you know if those rumors are true or false? I know, but the rumors, as far as I can tell, certainly when I interacted with him, and I, you know, we spoke towards the last 10 years almost every day, there was no evidence of any of that. He mentioned, he never mentioned it to, to me. I'm a little bit skeptical because he was some, at least at that age, somewhat hypochondriac. Um, and never in any account, so I've read a lot of books, uh, you know, um, uh, Judson's f famous book. They, I mean, there are lots of books written about this, um, the, the, the Crick Watson discovery in 1953, because it occupies such a singular moment in the history of science, also the sociology of science, and never seen any evidence that LSD, I think it's a pure rumor. He may have taken in his youth LSD, this was the 50s and 60s, it was very popular, but I've never seen any evidence that connects any his doing that or not doing that, which I have no knowledge of, to this discovery. No, I mean, what, what happened there is this classical discovery. They saw, you know, they were prepared. They, lo they you know, they, they thought very hard about a molecular matching mechanism that a could explain, you know, the, 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 how genetic information is stored. And then when they saw the, 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 the famous uh, bee um, photograph that, that Franklin uh, had taken, they sort of almost instantaneously realized a helix, particularly a double helix that's paired, could explain that because they thought about it for weeks and months and uh, argued about it day in and day out. So you have to think about things and not just do LSD to make Nobel Prize winning discoveries. Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, you, you have to obsess about this and then, you know, your mind takes this leap very, very often unconsciously where suddenly you wake up or the next day you just, it pops into your mind. And Francis was like that. So every time I stayed with him in the morning, he was always full of ideas. You know, in the morning when we had our, co our coffee, he said, well, last night, you know, he was old, I couldn't sleep so well, I was lying awake, and then I had this idea or that idea. Most of the time, they were silly. Most of the time, they simply didn't work. But, uh, yeah.